Okay, this is part two. And if we lost part one because the battery was exhausted, if we lost part one, a little separation in the mortar right there. We didn't miss anything but a stupid Willie Nelson, Ray Charles joke. And that this foundation um, was approved by somebody that um, from the Post Tension Slab Institute, somebody was certified from that. So I consider that a good thing. This is a garage metal overhead door. We're going to talk about it a little bit later. But a couple things that we're going to talk about is, is the paint. Can you see the paint on this? Alright. They just didn't finish painting it. Or they didn't paint it well enough. Or they were trying different colors. But something's happening here. Something's happening here with the paint finish. And it's the second panel. You always start it from the first. First, The second panel doesn't match the rest of the brickwork. Moving on along. This is where the gas meter enters the house. This is a good thing. And it's sealed. And it's connected. Looks like a little corrosion is going on right there. And the paint probably could be repainting that. Probably wouldn't hurt. See what we got going here. Oh. Well, we're at it. it. Doesn't hurt to document a few things. <clears throat> okay, if we come along here between the condensing units and stuff, it's kind of grass is not growing here all right it's just not rain gutters do not discharge water far enough away from the house that was in the first video now, this should have been with the water heater video I guess but the pressure relief drain is supposed to discharge between three and six inches from the ground See what we got here. That's six inches. How about that? Okay. Life is good. Continuous soffit vents, so it gives us a clue what to look for when we get into the attic. See, this is grading. And builders get that most of the time. This is drainage. This is level. Level is not drainage. You can see the little green here where the boss has been growing. Okay. Now, some builders, not this builder, but some builders will tell you if it doesn't dry within 48 hours, 72 hours, some, we consider that. That's not drainage. That's evaporation. That's evaporation. It's not drainage. Alright. This is mud. This is mosquitoes. This is West Nile disease. You know, things like that. Somebody in your family gets sick because of all the West Nile is mosquitoes over here. Well, then you can just say, well, it dried within. 48 hours, that's all I know to tell you. Shame on you. <coughs> Fences are beyond the scope of this inspection, but we're missing this, this picket here is loose. Look at that. Okay. Kind of button this up as we go. on along and this is going with the grading and the drainage okay if you see how this yard goes because of the neighbors yards and everything else and it's called you know engineering civil engineering you got this whole development the water's got to go someplace it comes off of your roof it's got to go someplace so we have these things called swales so we got our 
grading and it comes down and down and down. And then the drainage on the swell is supposed to come around the house and go down the sides. The side that doesn't drain, the side drains pretty good. And it's supposed to drain over here. My client, my client tells me that water pools or collects here. It doesn't go anywhere. That's what my client tells me. It says, oh yeah, it rains over there, it rains over there, but on this side it stays. Over here it stays. See that? That's called level. I didn't rig this. I just threw it down, man. You know? I just threw it down. That's all I can tell you. So, and there it is. My, my, my. So, our drainage could be improved. And it's just as simple as moving. You know, if they could roll the yard, sculpt it. You know, it doesn't have to have a lot of expensive drainage system installed. But something needs to happen. Something should happen. It concerns my client. And my client had some questions. Okay. Get ahead of myself. Long sprinkler heads are not supposed to be closer to the structure than five inches. Or flat work. So is this the structure or flat work? Either way, it's too close. But we're talking in the garage. We talk about concrete, and the builder's going to tell you this. Okay? Concrete does two things. It gets hard and it cracks. Ha ha ha. Everybody appreciates that joke. But what I'm looking at is for the performance of flat work. You expect it to crack. Four things, I think. Let me try. Does it get wider or narrower at the perimeter? It's narrower at the perimeter. That's a good thing. If it got wider, that would be different. There is a step inside the garage where it's a little bit wider. A little bit. That's one thing. Okay, this one doesn't have it. That's a good thing. Does it have the crack that's larger than a 32nd of an inch? Not larger. It's as large as a 32nd of an inch. And then a crack that's wider than a 32nd of an inch in more than two places. But well, we don't even have one. If we don't have a 32, 32nd of an inch, we certainly don't have a 16th of an inch. We're in two places. So far, this crack doesn't have anything. And the last thing is, is the crack out of plane? And that's really probably one of the most significant indicators of how a foundation is performing. How flat work, cement, your porch, foundation, whatever. And it's not out of plane. It's not teeter totter. It's perfectly level. As is the one in the garage. So these are typical for the building material. Now, your neighbor's not going to come over and say like, oh, you've got those typical cracks on your patio. I wish I had typical cracks on mine. You're not going to hear that, unfortunately. You know, it's, it's not a desirable, a desirable trait. It's an unavoidable characteristic of the building material. My windows are double pane, vinyl frame with UV. A little bit of mortar stuck in our weep hole right there. Write that down. I see. That's how I do it. This is my method. Mortar stuck in the patio weep hole. Coming on along. Right about where we started. If the other video, if, if the other video, um, it didn't erase when I exhausted the battery. And you got to hear the Willie Nelson joke. See, these are the way the repos are supposed to work. Now, here, this is a good example, though. Everything about a window is designed to shed water to the exterior. 
Okay, that's what we want to do. We don't want the windows to let water inside. So the way this trough and everything is built, it's engineered to take water out. And then you have these weep holes for the water to get out. But if you look inside the weep hole here, you see a little weir trap. This weir trap is broken. This weir trap is missing. The one on the patio was missing. We have a little weir trap inside of here. Now they're cheap. Most I'm not even required to inspect on them. You get a whole bag of them for ten dollars. Uh, you know, I've had some experience with weep holes in windows. Missing weir traps. Vacant house, nice windy day. And it can play like a flute. Probably half a dozen or more of these little traps, and they're again they're very affordable if you even want to bother with them. But I see them. I see that you had some. Now I see that you don't have some. Oh, the brickwork looks real good. But this lintel with the weep hole, this lintel needs to be painted. All the lentils need to be painted. Now up here we have wood frames. That's not a drainage plane. You're not holding any brick. You do not have any lentils up there. But anywhere you have the lentil, the metal lentil, that's supporting the brickwork, disrupting the drainage plane, is what that weep hole is for. And you don't want the metal rusting and expanding and, you know, um, interfering, you know, cracking your brickwork.